Hi guys, I'm Mar. I'm Asia. And I'm Caitlin. And this is The Need to Know. <laughs> All right, today guys, we are... Huh? It was dry. <laughs> and this is The Need to Know. I said the D three three. I do that every episode, so I be trying. I, I can't do it like Serena. Though. You gotta be like, I'm Shamar, like that, man. Loud, sing a little bit. I'm Shamar. So, nah, absolutely not. <laughs> Anyways, today, guys, we are talking about under the influence of anything. That means drugs, sex, right? Alcohol. Alcohol, love. Mm. It could be anything under the influence. Under the influence. So. Of course, we got our two lovely guests again um, for episode three. So to kick it off, um, we're going to go based off experience. So what was your worst under the influence in terms of alcohol? We're all grown here, by the way. Um, I guess y'all looking at me, so I'm going to go first. Mm-hmm. I don't really drink a lot. And it's not that I can't control my liquor or nothing like that. It's just I be liking to go to sleep if there's nothing going on. Or if I'm a little too drunk, I be tired. So I feel like my worst experience where, like, it made me rethink my life was um, I, I went to a party. The party was fun. Mm-hmm. I left the party with a group of friends. You know, you know, we walked one person home. The rest of us traveled to the next destination and then so, so on and so forth. Mm-hmm. Well, it was my turn to go home and... You know, I got walked to the bus normally. <clears throat> My house was literally like four stops from, you know, on the bus. I fell asleep on the bus and I woke up two hours later in the Bronx and I felt some type of way. I was very upset. I was still on the same bus now. I didn't, you know, nobody took me off the bus, but I was very mad at myself. Mm. I'm like, damn, I fell asleep. This is New York City. Somebody could have killed me. Like, I was very upset with myself that I fell asleep on the bus and I was only four stops away from being home. Mm. So then I'm like, damn, I might as well stay on the bus because I got to go home, right? So, you know, the bus, you know, does a little 360, brings you back to where you got from. That, that's, that was like a two hour ride back then. So I fell back asleep on a bus and missed my stop again. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. And from that moment, I just, I thought to myself, like, now nah, I have to be a little bit more responsible because I really could have got killed, snatched, kidnapped, anything. Mm-hmm. Luckily, I mean, the bus driver, he must have knew I was drunk because he was <laughs> like babysitting me. Because when I got off the bus, he was like, he was like, I see you finally made it to your destination. I was like, yeah, thank you. I appreciate you. He must have been watching over me the whole time because I was just knocked out sleep. You know, bus drivers, they see a girl, like, and I'm a girl, a guy, they're going to kick off the bus. They're going to be like, yo, bro, you got to get up. Let's go. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I was just a young girl on the bus, you know, sleeping or, or if he thought I didn't have nowhere to go or something. But he let me sleep on that bus and he did not kick me up. And I really think, if I'm being honest, they switch bus drivers. I really think that's what happened. But I don't know. But that moment made me rethink my whole life. Like, damn, you know, I could have, you know, something bad could have happened to me. Like, I was that drunk to where I fell asleep and I was unaware. That's kind of scary. You know, that happened, like, back in high school. But from there, I think I've been way more responsible with drinking than than I was that night. Because I definitely went to sleep twice and missed my stop twice. Hmm. And it was definitely, like, 2 a.m. when I got on the bus. Hmm. So I, I I went to the Bronx and back <laughs> Before I made it home, <laughs> like that, I think that was my worst experience. Though, where do you live again? I live in. Well, at the time, I lived in Flushing. I was only four stops from Jamaica Avenue, literally <laughs> only four stops on the bus. Like literally one, two, three. Yeah, four stops. I was literally four stops from the bus, and I went all the way to the Bronx because you know the Q forty four goes through Queens to the Bronx. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, the, and at that time, it wasn't express. It was, like, very much so local. So, I was like, damn. Yikes, okay. Um, okay, so, last Memorial Day. Yeah. Um, because, like myself, I, I actually didn't start drinking until 21. Like, I was always that person in high school. Oh, I'm never going to drink. I'm never going to do drugs. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that should have been me. You turned 21. And I was like, okay, I'll have, I'll have, a, I'll have some liquor. Um, but last Memorial Day, I was like, okay. I was like, we're off from work. It's Monday. You know, let's have a good time. And I'm at a friend's house and, um, I forgot the name of the tequila, but it was like, we got like a really big thing of tequila. We got a chaser and I was being teased that like, I wasn't like keeping up with everybody. So I was like, okay, I'm going to like keep up and I'm drinking, I'm drinking, I'm drinking. And like, now I'm feeling great. And mm-hmm. now I'm drinking and all I remember after that was like, I 
woke up and I was covered in my own vomit. Oh. And I, they tried to put me in the bed. I threw up in the bed. Like, yeah. <laughs> I was just like, oh God. But I was still out of it. And then from there, last thing I remember was like, I was then put in the shower, like fully clothed. Oh, that happened. And to me too. I guess I had gone MIA. So, like, mom's now looking for me. Dad's now looking for me. Boyfriend's now looking for me. Like, everybody's looking for me. And my mom, she's from the Caribbean. So, it's like, if she doesn't hear from you after like 30 oh, minutes, uh-huh. it's like she dials the whole block. Like, yep. everybody's now has a search party out for me. Mm-hmm. And all I remember is hearing on the phone is that like someone finally called her and spoke with her. And I'm just like sitting there crying like, oh my God, oh my God, I can't believe I'm like that. Like, it was just like, ugh. I felt like complete shit the next day. Oh my God. <laughs> but, and I was like, yeah, tequila, never again. Jeez. But I think that was probably the worst I'd ever been. Okay. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, you guys already know the story of my worst song. <laughs> Um, but I guess I'll say it again for the podcast listeners. Um, okay. So I was 18 or 19, I think working at Panera bread with Serena. Um, and she invited me to this party, but like, keep in mind, like back then I was never a party person and like some always came up. So like every time Serena or Patrick was like, yo, let's go out. I was like, damn, I got something to do. So it, I think it was, it was like in January or something. Yeah, it was Valentine's Day. So Serena's like, yo, let's go after work. So I'm like, you know what? I don't got nothing to do. Fuck it. Let's go. So mind you, I'm mad young. Like, I have no idea about alcohol. So we're at Serena's house. One of her friends came and, like, bought a bottle. I think it was Bacardi. And I'm like, I don't know what Bacardi is. I'm like, okay. So Serena's like, oh, you know, I got Bacardi. Do you want some? I'm like, hell yeah. Like, but I don't know. So... Like she gives she gives me like a cup with like orange juice and Bacardi. I drink it. I'm like, this is mad good. So then while Serena is like talking to her friend, I end up taking like majority of the bottle. And then that was at like 10 p.m. or something like that. Then Serena's like, oh, let's go, let's go to the party. Mind you, the party's like right around the corner from Serena's house. So as we're walking, mind you, there's snow on the floor and everything. We're walking and like my head starts feeling good. I feel nice. I'm like, okay, cool, cool, cool. But then, like, as we're walking, it's, like, it's getting worse and worse. So, I'm, like, I need to sit down for a minute. So, then, this party got me tight because, like, most parties, like, when you go, it's, like, there's lines because, like, the the bouncer got to check for certain things. I got nothing on me, but I'm, like, all right, cool. So, the girl's line is moving mad fast. Like, it's just blazing in there. Always. Meanwhile, the guy, I'm the only guy, too. So, like, the guy (laughs) line is mad far back. I'm, like... Okay, so Serena's like, yo, you gonna be okay? Like, are you fine? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'll be fine. Like, go ahead. So she goes ahead. I'm staying on the line. Like 10 seconds later, I'm like, I need to move away from this line. So I get off the line. All of a sudden, I throw up. So then, like, the bouncer and the guys, like, on the line, it was like, oh, like, you all right? I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Next thing I know, I'm trying to walk back to the line, and I fall. Like, (laughs) fell, boom, round the snow. And then I'm trying to get up. I cannot get up for no for some odd reason. <laughs> so I'm like, damn. And like, I'm trying to look for my phone. I can't find my phone. Next thing I know, I pass out. In the snow? In the snow. Oh, no. So then I wake up. No, nah, I didn't wake up. But like, you know, like when you pass out, but you can still hear shit. Mm-hmm. So I hear this one guy. He's like, oh, this party must be lit. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm like, yo, you see me on the floor. Like you thinking the party lit. That's the first thing. So I'm like, all right, cool. So then in my head, I'm like, dang, I should like call Serena or something. So then I'm still passed out. I can't find my phone. I finally find my phone and like, I'm trying to like unlock it. But like, I'm like, I'm too messed up to like press the buttons. So this one girl comes out and she's like, oh, are you okay? Blah, blah, blah. So then in my head, I'm just like, all right, I just need to get up. Like, that's all I need to do. Just get up, go in the party. I'll be okay. So... This girl's like, no, no, we're going to call, like, the ambulance or something. I'm like, the ambulance? What? What? I'm like, fuck me the ambulance for? Like, I'm okay. So, like, then I throw up. I throw up on my jacket. And then she's like, oh, yeah, we're going to call the ambulance. And then I'm like, nah, nah, you know what? Let me just text Serena. Like, I'm, I'm okay. I'm going to just go home. So I call an Uber. So then 
as I call the Uber, I pass out again. <laughs> um, I wake up. I see an ambulance. They got a whole stretch and everything. I'm like, oh, whoa. I'm like, wait, wait, what? Yes, this is a, a real story. I promise you it's a real story. So laughing. they pull out the stretch and everything. I'm like, yo, what the heck? I'm like, yo, this is not that deep. I'm just drunk. <laughs> so then all of a sudden I hear like the girl's like, oh yeah, I called his mother. Bruh. Yo, as soon as I heard that, I said, oh shit. I'm like, but mind you, she said that my mom didn't pick up, but she left a voicemail. I said, it doesn't matter. Like <laughs> my mom's one of those old Haitian ladies that she'd be checking like every voicemail. So mind you, she's at work and shit. So I'm like, oh my God. Next thing I know, I look and I see Serena and like the bouncer is like pushing her back because like Serena's like, yo, my friend is right there. And he's like, no, like you can't leave. If you leave, you can't come back in. So I'm like, at this point, I'm like, why am I going to the, the aim, like the hospital? This is OD. This girl, this girl, all she has to do is get me up. Like it's not that bad. So then I get to the hospital. I'm, I'm actually at the hospital. My, keep in mind, I'm 19. So, and this was right at the time. Like, my mom, again, she's very Haitian. So, she don't like tattoos, earrings. I basically got all of that shit. So, she's already, she's already like, on the fence about, like, kicking me out and shit. So, then, like, my mom calls my sister to come with her to the hospital. And, like, the last thing I saw before I fully passed out was her face. Like, and she was just clapping. And I was like, okay. So then when I woke up this, the next morning, like, she picked me up. She didn't even come out the car. She met my sister to come get me because she didn't want to look at me. <laughs> and, like, I had to call out of work the next day. Serena walked all the way to my house to give me my, to give me my bag. And, like, my mom, like, she was just like, you, you, you know what you want. Like, that's it. You got it. Like, <laughs> she's like, I'm done. Like, I can't do this no more. Damn. It's and, like a slow clap. <laughs> yeah, she was just like, mm-hmm. <laughs> Okay, you got it. You win. You want to be grown? Go ahead. And I'm like, wow. no. It was the passing out three times, three times throughout the story for Yo. me. Shout out, shout out to the girl though. For, I'm still for trying to figure out how you went from in the Uber to on the ambulance right? stretcher. Like. And and Uber charged me because you know how like when you when you call Uber but you don't get in mm -hmm. and they leave, they charge me five dollars. I still didn't get the five dollars back. Did you? Nah, that's the one. That is the one. Yeah, you took yeah, the cake. Serena, man. you couldn't make it past the, the bouncer, huh? <laughs> yeah. Nah, son. Oh my gosh. I'm like, yo, my friend is outside. What the line? That's my friend right there. Y'all putting in this stretcher. He's like, oh, you came outside. I'm like, I'm like, bro. Outside, like, <laughs> it's the. That yeah, party must be lit. Yeah. She's like, why is he not inside yet? Like, <laughs> what's going on? <laughs> I'm a bit on the line. <laughs> Damn, you should have left him by himself. That day was crazy. That sounded pretty lit. Nah, that's, not, that, that's better than sleeping on the bus. <laughs> nah, it, it was lit though. I'm not gonna lie. Like it, it taught me a lot. That day, it, it was crazy. All right. Um. So I guess to switch off, what was your worst moment with any drug? Doesn't have to. You don't have to name the drug because I know we got Caribbean parents. But <laughs> like, what was your worst time with like drugs? Caitlin, come okay. think about mine. Okay, um, I can honestly say I've only ever done edibles. Like, I haven't like, okay. I've never smoked a blunt. I've never done any of that other stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, I only started experimenting with them very recently. Mm -hmm. Um, I haven't had anything like super crazy. Like the worst experience it's always just been like a really really fun ride. I think. The worst time I took one was I came home from work and I was like, you know what? I'm just I'm sitting right there. I'm just going to take it. And I usually only take them with my boyfriend because like I'm, I'm just not experienced like that. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know, I'm just going to I'm going to do it. So it's a cookie. And I had like, I don't know, it was a brownie. Forgive me. And I had like maybe two thirds of it. I was just like, yeah, I was like. Okay, it's pretty good, right? <laughs> Don't oh judge gosh. me. <laughs> it was my second time. So I'm sitting there. I'm like, okay, you know what? Like almost an hour's passed. And I'm like, wow, I'm really not feeling anything. But um, I said, okay, I'm going to like go take a shower just like before it really hits. Whoa. I got to the bathroom and everything was just so slow. I was like, whoa. And I just started laughing a lot. And... 
that was, that was like the longest shower of my life. I am that person who takes a quick, I'm like in and out unless I'm mm. washing my hair. I was probably in there about 40 minutes. Because I have that shower where you like remove the head and everything. So oh, everything's yeah. just moving really, really slow. And oh, I think the highlight honestly was like, so I usually do the laundry in the house because my mom, my grandma doesn't like how my dad does it. So I did the laundry that night, but I guess I didn't fold it right. And she was like, hey, could you come here for a second? And I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. Like, I don't want to like, I don't want her to see me like this. And she's like, you know, like, you didn't really fold the laundry right. Are you okay? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I know. Oh, good. I'm just trying to do anything to make like get in and out. Hmm. And I finally go into my room and I want to FaceTime my boyfriend. And I'm like, oh, my God. I was like, I'm really feeling this. And he's like, okay, like, did you set an alarm for tomorrow? Like, is your phone charged? I was probably on like 6%. He's like, get up and charge your phone right now. And I remember being in bed. I'm like, I'm not going to make it. <laughs> I'm not going to make it. And I remember just sitting there laughing at my grandma from the other room. She's like, you sure you're okay? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, don't worry about it. And I let out this like, no, she goes, are you crying? I was like, no. <laughs> I just lost it. Um, I survived the next morning, though. I told my dad all about it. Uh, yeah, that's probably the craziest. It's just, it's always like, a fun time just mm -hmm. like you know chips are really good like i've learned like doritos are my snack mm -hmm. when i'm like there i'm like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah and lifetime movies like you really start to question everything about a yes. lifetime movie like why are they all the same plot like who submits these scenarios to the channel it's because like they have the same writer that loves the one story okay yes. <laughs> but you just sit there and question eating doritos like who submits these stories it's like it's a fun time it's terrible yeah. Oh my gosh. Asia. Oh, it's my turn? Mm -hmm. I don't think my story is like that crazy or anything. But um, my cousin, she's older than me by some years, probably like 10 years, I'll be honest. But when I first started experiencing with like marijuana. Marijuana. Yes. She was the person like everybody else was super against it. But like she seemed so very understanding. So I love her so much to this day. Mm -hmm. She was like you're a young lady and you're so young and if you're gonna do this then you should do it with family because you know you could get laced out there and i've never been laced but i think this is the one time i felt pretty laced and it was with her so you know it was like the middle of summer and i was like 16 years old and we had just finished you know sparking up doing the thing that we do and it was like okay now we finna walk to the store and she went and got her son. I don't know. I don't remember where she picked him up from, but she picked him up. He was in a stroller. So we're walking down, you know, the block, going to the store. I think we were going to the store. I actually can't even remember because I was like so out of it that day. And all of a sudden, I remember we went to um, like a, a CVS or Rite Aid or something like that. And she's shopping around and it was so cold in there. Outside was so hot, but it was so cold in that store. And I remember we went to the register and I just remember saying, oh my God. I can't see. <laughs> like, I could, everything turned white. And I like, I think I went to grab her, and I don't know, but I fell on the floor. And you know how you was like before, like, when you pass out, you can still hear shit? Mm -hmm. I passed out. That was the first time I ever passed out. And I was actually more scared to pass out than anything else. So I was like, what the hell is going on? I can't see. Everything's white. And I just fell on the floor. And... I heard everybody like, oh my God, is she okay? Now, mind you, I'm still passed out, right? I'm still passed out on the ground. And I heard the guy, I heard the guy go, no, we're going to call her an ambulance. And I was okay with that. I'm not going to lie. Whoa. I thought I was dying. I'm not going to lie. I was so okay with that. But I also was not thinking. Like, I heard it subconsciously in my head. And then after that, I heard him like dialing the numbers and shit, giving the address. And then I just, my cousin came to me and she whispered in my ear. She said, if you don't get your ass up right now. <laughs> she said, she said, they cannot call no goddamn ambulance because they're going to take you to the hospital and they're going to call your mother. Yo, and something in my heart said, my mother? Oh, no. I jumped up so fast and I was like, I'm okay, sir. It's like, it's just like I needed that, like the mother confirmation. Because I was like, no, I'm okay, sir. He's like, are you sure? I'm like, yeah, just give me some water. Like, I'll be fine. So... I started drinking the water, pouring it all over myself. I'm like, nah, I cannot. Not my mother. My cousin, she was like, girl, I'm glad that you got up because if you didn't, oh my gosh, they was taking you to the hospital. You underage, everything. She was like, they was like, your mother was going to have to come up there. And I was like, nah, I couldn't do that one. I'm not ready. <laughs> I was not ready for my mother to be there. But that was my first time like ever being 
under the influence of like THC and passing out. I never passed out before. Mm -hmm. So that was an experience in itself. And then to have my mother come to my rescue and not even know like this was my life without her. Like, no, I could not have that. Mm -mm. Oh, Lord. That was probably my worst experience. I know I have some crazy stories, right? Uh Just falling asleep and passing out. (laughs) I'm just all over the place. That's why I don't do these these stuff no more. I can't. Mm -hmm. Once in a blue moon, and even then, I'd be falling asleep. <laughs> um. Okay. So, I've I've done weed for a long period of time. A long um, period of time. Yes, I stopped recently. I didn't even know you was like that. Yeah. Um. But nah, I I started because of like a, a personal matter, but then I like got over it and just stopped. Um. But this was my first time because me and my cousin we used to do weed. Like, we used to smoke blunts, like, all the time. But it was 420, which is, like, the national holiday for weed. Um, And my brother was still in high school and had a friend who was, like, making edibles. But, like, I used to always hear about it, but I was just like, all right, let me try it with him. So he comes home from high school, and I'm sitting here with him. And, like, he gives me a piece. Like, it was a Rice Krispie treat. But, like, nobody ever told me that, like, you're only supposed to take a small bite. <laughs> and so when he gave it to me, I took like a good 80% of the, and it was like kind of big, like this big. So I took like 80% of it. You just ate it like it was right. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like, this don't taste like nothing. Like I could taste like it tastes different, but like, I'm like, okay, this is nothing. So like I'm eating it, I'm eating it. And then like 30, 45 minutes pass, nothing's happening. I'm like, yo, this is the wackest 420 of my life, bro. <laughs> I'm like, where's the blunts? Like, just give me a blunt. I'll be all right. So then I'm watching like a Meek Mill interview. Like he's doing a freestyle or something. And my brother's like watching TV. All of a sudden, Meek Mill just turned into like some alien. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, yo, what? I'm like, whoa. I'm like, son, is this it? Like, so I'm like, okay, this feel nice. But then like maybe five seconds after that, it just got way worse. And so next thing I know, like I can't walk. I can't see thing like to me a edible is like smoking a blunt and getting high but like a hundred times worse like and like a blunt high like lasts for like maybe an hour or two an edible can last like all day because it's in your system right i gotta try this it's, I've, <laughs> like yo, do it. the first for your first time do it with somebody there like really don't do it alone and be prepared not to go to work the next day unless yes. you want to feel really groggy exactly so like what? I took it at like maybe three o'clock by like four o'clock. I was done. Like it takes a while to hit. But like once it hits, it hits like so. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sitting there. I'm sitting there like I'm trying to compensate. Like I'm trying to get my brain back together to be like, OK, you're just high. You're not going through like a traumatic death or something. So. There's like there's like moments in the edible while you're high where it's like you have like two seconds to be like oh shoot like this is really happening and then you go right back into like it really being happened? high yes so there was like certain moments I'm like I'm looking at my brother I'm like yo help me like <laughs> this shit hurts like <laughs> so he's like mind you he took a piece too so well, he had the twenty percent piece yes he 80. had the the very small bite so oh. he was okay but he was still high but me I'm I'm done <laughs> so. The moments I'm like, okay, I'm like, yo, call an ambulance. Like, I'm like, I'm really dying. Like, for real, for real. So he's he's sitting there laughing, but like, like now that I look at that, I'm I see why he was laughing, but like in that moment, I'm just like, yo, I'm dead serious. Like, this this is not normal. So at one point, my mom like comes home. So he's looking at me, he's just like, Yo, I need you to be as normal as fucking possible. Oh no. So I'm like, I'm like, yeah, I'm I got it, bro. Like, I'm good. So then my mom's like, she's like, hi guys. And I'm like, hey mom. Like, I'm that's that's the weirdest thing about me. Like with weed, like she never knew I smoked, but like the moments I did and she was there, she never knew I was high. Like I was the most normal person until she left. And it's just like, all right, I'm back. But <laughs> I'm back. So then what was it? It was like six, seven o'clock. My uncle was like downstairs. He comes home. So like I'm telling my brother, I'm like, yo, I'm starving. Like, and he's like, yo, we cannot leave this room because you're too high to act normal. So I'm like, no, I'm going downstairs. And he's like, yo, Shamar, like, I'm dead serious. Like, do not leave this room. So like, while he turns around, I walk out the room. 
because I'm I'm dead hungry. Like <laughs> weed makes me hungry. So like I go downstairs. I'm like, mind you, it's a, I have like a it's not a big house, but it's a big house, but it's like a two story. So and it's normally quiet. So I go in the fridge and like I want a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. <laughs> so I get the bread. I put the peanut butter on the bread. But when I open the fridge, I can't find the jelly. <laughs> so I scream mad loud to my brother. I'm like, yo, where's the jelly? <laughs> So then everybody, like, I see lights turn on. Everybody, they're like, Shamar, what's going on? I'm like, I need the jelly. <laughs> so my uncle was like, yo, what is wrong with you? And I'm like, so, like, that's when my brain kicked. I'm like, oh, shoot, I'm doing something stupid. So I'm like, I'm like, nah, nothing. I, I was just looking for the jelly. He's like, so why are you screaming? I'm like, nah, I'm, I'm, I'm nothing. It's okay. So he goes back in his room. So then my cousin comes on, like, my cousin comes upstairs and he's like, like, Shamar, what's up? So I don't know why I did some like weird, like, oh, what's up? <laughs> like, so he's like, you okay? And then my brother comes out and he's like, yeah, yeah, he's fine. He's fine. He's fine. So then he takes me back upstairs and then I then I had the peanut butter with no jelly sandwich. <laughs> so I had like two of them and I'm I'm busting it down. And you know, like, you know, peanut butter, like peanut butter is very like hard to chew. Thick. Yeah. It's very thick. But like I'm busting it down, like <laughs> so I'm like, like you know when you high, you can't really tell what you're doing. So I'm like, I'm just doing this. There's peanut butter all over my face. My mom comes in, she's like, "Oh, you was hungry, hungry." I'm like, I'm like, yeah, yeah, I was, I was starving. So then, what happens? Then I go to sleep. Like, well, it, it takes a while to go to sleep because it's like your brain is like moving like mm -hmm. all over the place. So I wake up the next morning. I'm thinking, okay, I'll be fine. Wake up the next morning, I'm getting like the after effects of still being high. So then I didn't realize that I had a date with a girl. So this girl's like calling me. She's like, oh, Shamar, where are you? Like, I'm I'm on Jamaica Avenue. So I'm like, shit. And I'm like, no, nah, no, nah, I'm, I'm coming right now. Like, I'm I'm in an Uber. So I get, I go oh all gosh. the way to this. I tell her to meet me in the city. I go all the way to the city. I have like sunglasses on because the sun hurt in my eyes. She's like, you okay? I'm like, yeah, um. I'm I'm not gonna be on I'm gonna be honest with you, like I was gonna cancel this date, but like I'm really fucking high right now. So <laughs> but yeah, I mean I mean shout out to that girl. She know who she is, but it like that was just I have many worse like edible times, but that time like I knew that she was the one, huh? Yeah, she she didn't give me a chance again, but it was just I guess I guess it wasn't meant to be because clearly I didn't know it was gonna last like more than twenty four hours, but it did, so Damn. If that you were in her shoes, would you give her a second chance? Yeah, I would. Like, not nah, well, I don't know. I think I would, but it's just like it was my first time being high. So like I told her, well, no, it wasn't my first time being high, but high off edibles. But like I told her like after the fact. And she was just like, Oh no, I understand. But we still had a date. And I'm like <laughs> It's the bit we still had a date. <laughs> I was like, um, what you want me to do? Like right, I didn't I made know. the date. Like just high. Hold yeah. my hand now. Like I, I thought the edible high was gonna be like a blunt high, but like for a little longer. Nah, it's totally different. Like very, no, very I different. I have yet yeah. to experience that. It's kind of fun though. It, it's it's fun. the colors and the yeah. sounds. Like once you once you get off of yeah, once you get off of panic mode, like it's fun. You're chilling. So. It's very chill. Honestly, your story in my head sounds like an episode on a, like a family sitcom mm -hmm. like on it like yo like, my whole i'm <laughs> telling you my my family life it, it could be a whole sitcom like i know like a lot of people look at me and they're like oh he's very quiet but if you know what actually goes on it's terrible very terrible nah, that's hilarious <laughs> mm. that's uh, you two for two with the stories right now brompt every yo everything i've been through it, it has a crazy story like nose piercings ear piercings tattoos getting drunk um weed vaping like i've i've done it all it doesn't seem like i've done it all but i've done it all you'll be outside or whatever <laughs> i used to not anymore all all of that has taught me like being under the influence has taught me a lot in life like it's just it's fun but it has to you have to have like a limit because once yeah. you go past that limit is it's not pretty. <laughs> you gonna have a bad night, like. No, um, I can honestly say I think I'm at the point where I don't think I want to do anything anymore. Nah, try. It. I mean, 
I accept that. I think I'm gonna give that a try and then I'm mm-hmm. done. Cause everything, well, I haven't done much, but the two mm-hmm. things I have done, drinking and out, al- um, I was gonna say drinking and alcohol, drinking and marijuana. That's just that's enough in itself, and then mixing them and you have so much different. Yeah, that's dangerous. I don't, know. Yeah, don't mix them. But it's fun. Yeah, I've it's, I've it's had fun. that experience, but like, <laughs> don't mix. It's fun. It's yes, it is fun. But everything is like, even like the after effects. Waking up the next morning. Sometimes you have an attitude and you'd be like, nah, I have an attitude because my ass was drunk last night. You, you know what I'm saying? Like, you mm-hmm. have so many different emotions or just even, you know, hangovers and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. You'd be like, damn. Yeah, Look at ain't... all the cons that come with doing it. It's like, yeah, I had fun yesterday, but damn, now I'm, I gotta I'm go starving. To work. Yeah. I got to go to work and I got to kill a headache and I'm tired. Mm-hmm. Like, you'd be going through, through it. Through it, bro. Um, so let's see. Let's see. Okay, so I'll, I'll take a turn. In terms of being under the influence, um, let's talk about love because a lot of people don't know, but being in love is a very addicting drug Mm -hmm. and it makes you do some crazy things. Mm -hmm. So uh, I guess the question is like what, what or when was your worst time or not worse, but what was the craziest thing that you did because you was in love with someone or something? I became obsessive. Mm. I feel like that's the craziest thing. Mm. Now, being obsessive has actions, obviously. Mm -hmm. I've done some pretty crazy actions by being obsessive. Examples? Huh? Example? I've done it all. I've popped up. I've spoke to parents. I've did it all. Spoke to parents? Yeah. Like... I, I don't know if I went that far. I'm like... It's just I don't know I'm I'm not crazy, mm-hmm. but being in love or or loving something can definitely turn you into something else. Like I was very obsessive. I will say like I get very obsessed because I'm territorial. Like if mm-hmm. it's mine, it's mine. If I think it's mine, I want it, and I only want to have it. You get what I'm saying? Right. And if I can't access it, I'm going to try to figure out how to access it. I'm coming to your house. I'm coming to your job. I'm coming to your school. I'm going to knock on your door. Talk to your mother. Those are very crazy things, you know what I'm mm. saying? But it's just, it's not because I want to be crazy. Like, I'm not about to go break up your stuff or, or, you know, pour bleach on you or anything. You know, that type of crazy. But I just want answers. Like, I want to know what's going on. Like, what are you doing? Like, I like, and, you know, people have a tendency to, like, ignore people like that. You know what I'm saying? Right. So you start ignoring me now. I'm extra crazy. Like, I'm it calling you your boss. Crazy. I'm trying to find out if you came to work today. Like, called your boss. Wow. Like, I get very obsessive. But it's not to be obsessive mm-hmm. or to be crazy. It's because what if something happened to you? You could have got kidnapped, anything. Like, I got to find out. You know what I'm saying? You're mm-hmm. not telling me. You're not even telling me, like, I don't want to talk to you no more. You're just ghosting me. I can't be ghosted. Like, I get that type of crazy. Like, I got to figure out what happened to you. But now I'm trying to be, you know, older. Mm. And I'm trying to, like, accept people just ignoring you. Literally, like. Right. Or not saying anything. Or just ghosting you for no reason. Because that happens to girls, too. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, nah. I, like, before I couldn't do it, I could not do it. I would be so crazy. So have you actually, like, called someone's boss? Excuse me? Yes. You've called someone's boss to see if they came to work? Yeah. That's <laughs> nah, that's very obsessive. Such, <laughs> does such and such make it into work today? Oh, can I speak to because you know a lot like a couple years ago you had to call people's jobs to talk to them. It wasn't as lenient. I'm not gonna lie, you had to like really call, like, hey, can I speak to such and such? Even at my job when I was at Walgreens, you had to call to speak to that person because sometimes they couldn't access their phone. A lot of jobs four years ago would not let you like it was very like wrong to be on your phone mm-hmm. now for some reason i'm noticing everybody's on their phone at work like yes. you you at the register waiting to be checked out and they're checking their social media and you're right. like hello yep. i'm trying to go home like mm-hmm. what are you doing but three years ago that was not the case you know what i'm saying three years ago you could not be on your phone at all so yeah did such and such make it into work today oh yeah i'm his sister i'm just calling to find out xyz Okay, well, you know, when he comes in, just, you know, give him a message, let him know I called. Mm-hmm. And, you know, bosses thought that shit was normal. Like, right. they're like, okay, they're just calling, you know, whatever, speak to such and such. But clearly they're not here, so, you know, it's okay. I've called moms before, too. I've spoke to people's mothers. That's different. Oh hey, God. you know, you know, you always played off. Hey, I know such and such was sick last week or whatever the case may be. Always something that I know for a fact, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Something you know for a fact. Oh, I'm just calling to check in. How you doing, ma'am? This is such and such. You know, well, okay, that's fine. Well, it was nice to talk to you. I'll talk to you later. Now, your mother just told me that you ran to the bank real quick. Now I know you was ignoring me. You see? Now I know the next time you speak to me, oh, but you... <laughs> oh, 
Oh my god. A- anyways, I Caitlin. don't want to be in love no more, okay? <laughs> Caitlin, what was your worst time? Or craziest thing? Um, I don't think I've ever been like crazy, crazy in love to the point where I've done like toxic things. That's mm-hmm. toxic. I I I will admit that I have stayed in like toxic situations because, because I was in love. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. So oh, it doesn't matter if he's or not. But um, like my high school sweetheart, I stayed in that relationship a lot longer than I should have. Now, when I say toxic, I don't mean like there was no abuse, like I wasn't hit, but just like I felt like I was sacrificing so much. Mm-hmm. And I was getting little in return. So it's high school. So mind you, it's like small things, but like. But you felt it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There were times like, it was like, okay, like, let's plan to hang out, right? Mm-hmm. And if he was going like, to come over on the weekends or whatever, spent the whole day cleaning my house for him not to show up. And it happened more than once. That's hurtful. And it was like, dude, not even a text, not even a phone call. Mm-hmm. And there was like another time, uh, I barely saw him at all one summer. And then I, I forgot why I was downtown Brooklyn, but like I was coming back up, uh, like along the B41, like it runs along mm-hmm. Flatbush mm-hmm. and I'm on the bus. And I think I was like studying or something. I was like, remember those summer reading books you had to do? So I yeah. think I was doing that. And then I had looked up and like, I knew his stop was along that way, but he like got on the bus. So I was like. Oh, okay, cool, right? right? So, like, I, like, called him to just be like, okay, let's see, like, you know. Watched him pick up the phone and didn't even answer. <laughs> but he did text me back and he was just like, oh, yeah, well, I'm going to visit my dad. So, like, I'm on the bus now and I can't really talk. I was just like. I'm on the bus, too. <laughs> you can talk. Thank you. He, uh, I eventually told him, I was like, yeah, just turn around, whatever. But it was just, like, small things like that. Um... And I think I was just ho- trying to hold on to like the beginning of the yeah. relationship because mm-hmm. it was so good in the beginning. Like the small things. Yo. I used to get like surprises, my favorite snacks. He walked me to class. And then we made it like out of high school for about two years, I think. And like we went to the same college one year. And I don't know. I think just towards that, it was like, you know what? I just like, I'm not happy anymore. And I'm trying to hold, I love you so much. Like I love like the person that you are and like, you know, you're a great person, but I, I'm not in love with you anymore. Mm. But I guess in that sense, yeah, it was just like, it was toxic because I was kind of just letting him just like walk all over me in a sense. I was just saying, oh, oh, it's okay. Oh, it's okay. Mm -hmm. Because I was trying to hold on to the good parts. Um, Oh, not to mention, we're just gassing his ass up. Mm, Our anniversary was the day after my birthday. So it was constantly trying to combine gifts together. Mm. One year, <laughs> I think it was my 18th birthday, I was like, you know, when you're in love and you're just like, oh yeah, I don't care if you get me this. Like, you can get me a chocolate bar for all I care, right? Mm. The man got me a chocolate bar for my birthday. Yeah, I would feel some type of way too. Like, really? It's like that very literal. I was, it's like, you literally gave me the bare minimum. The chocolate bar. I could have bought this. That's tough. Exactly. Um, I could have bought a box of these. <laughs> <laughs> but like all the like I said, still like he's he's a great guy and it was, you know, it was great, but just like it was just the lack of effort at that point. I was like, mm-hmm. I don't want to do this anymore. I, I can't do this. And then even after like the breakup, it wasn't until like a whole six months later where like an effort was made where he tried to like win me back. But at that point, it's I was like, too late. Six months. On. That's a long like, time. Right. Yeah. He's happy with his new girlfriend, so it's all that matters. I felt that, sis. Mm. Toxic <laughs> relationships. I felt that. Oh no, that's a that's another topic for another <laughs> day. Um, but I guess to close out, um, what is mm, what would be your advice for like being under the influence with anything? Love, mm-hmm. drugs, sex. Don't let it consume your world. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's fun to escape every now and then, mm-hmm. especially because life happens and sometimes you want to escape your own reality. And mm-hmm. I feel like we use those things to kind of just like kind of be gone for the moment. Because, you know, once the liquor's in your system, you're completely out of it. Mm-hmm. Once the drug's in your system, you know, it's a whole other place. Right. When you're in love, it's like a whole nother feeling. But um, 
pretty much that it's okay every now and then, but like, don't let it become who you are. You know, mm. don't be an alcoholic. Don't like be that. a, don't be a druggie. Like, mm-hmm. don't be. Obsessed. It's okay to be obsessed, but just not. No, don't. Be don't obsessed. be. Don't be. Don't be that obsessed girl. <laughs> Because nobody wants to be that obsessed girl. That's, maybe that's for, a fact. Maybe some guys, they might find a kinky or something. No. But it's no. Like, I don't, don't, know what it don't, don't call my boss. <laughs> no, you'd be surprised. Don't talk to my mother. You'd be surprised. <laughs> you'd be surprised. But, but some people are way worse. So me calling and, you know, checking social media is not as bad as, like... Calling my mother? <laughs> that's not that bad. <laughs> or calling my boss to see if I came into work? You're oh wild. I just, okay, I just think I have a problem with rejection. Like, I literally have learned that years later that it was just the rejection of it all. Mm-hmm. And that's why my advice to anybody under the influence of anything would be to learn your limits. Like, mm-hmm. with drinking, you know, any type of drugs you do. And even with, like, loving someone, learn your limits and create boundaries. Because those are definitely important. Like, it's I realized tough. years later, now that I'm getting older, that... Calling somebody's boss sounds a little crazy. You know what I'm saying? Or, <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. Talking to their mom, like, I don't mean to be crazy or, you know, to come off in those negative things. I'm just concerned about what's going on. You get what I'm saying? So my what's going on and me trying to figure it out myself then made me crazy because everybody else looking in, it's like, nah, she's crazy. That's, she's bugging. She's wild. Like, why is she calling your mom, your boss, you know, your cousins, checking your social media every two seconds? But I'm just trying to figure out if you're alive. Like, did you get attacked by a tiger or something? I don't know. I'll buy a tiger. <laughs> cool. Learn your limits. Yes. That's my advice. Wow. All right. Well, you guys can promote, say, your Instagram. Come on again. <laughs> yes. Each episode, we got to yeah, do this. I can't just take the last clip. Like, I got the same shirt yeah, on. Nah, because some people, some people might just watch, like, episode three might be their first episode. But you can take the clip from episode one because I got the same shirt on. Nah. All right. So with that being said, you can find me on social media, on Twitter and on Instagram at It's Asia, I-T-S-A-Y-J-A, Triple H. And you can find me on YouTube at The Names Asia, A-Y, apostrophe, J-A, Triple H. I have to say it like that because it's definitely an apostrophe and you will not find me on um, YouTube. Caitlin. <laughs> uh, you can follow me on Instagram at kate.munson and lynn.munson. On Instagram? On Instagram. Both on Instagram. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, well, to close out the show. Where can we find you? I'm about to say, dang, oh, oh, can oh. I get it out? Get like, time. Right. Anyways, y'all can find me on the gram underscore we want more. Y'all can also find my partner, Reed, behind the camera at Reed the host. Um, and check out her, you know, edit page at Serena Castillo edits. Um, but you can also find us, the show at TNTK show, both on Instagram and Twitter. And as always, well, yeah, I remember the, okay, cool. And as always, thank you guys for watching the show. That's all you need to know. Bye guys.